Let's talk about the scaffolding algorithm for division. Our strategy is going to be to relate the steps of the algorithm to the steps of solving a word problem. So every step will have a unit labeled with it that relates to the word problem. This is going to take us a while and is way more than you would write if you were just using the scaffolding algorithm to solve a division problem, but hopefully it'll help us understand what's going on. This is a measurement how many groups word problem. A baker's dozen is 13. A bagel company packages 13 bagels in every box of bagels that they sell. If they make 982 bagels, how many boxes can they fill? So this problem is a how many groups, groups are going to be the boxes. This is 982 bagels. The bagels are our total divided by 13 bagels in one box. That's our group size, and we're trying to figure out how many groups or how many boxes. If you think about how this would work in the bagel store, we would start with 982 bagels, and we would package up 13, package up another 13, and we could count how many boxes we filled. But that's going to take a long time if we were to subtract 13 at a time. So this algorithm is going to allow us to do larger uh, sets of boxes of our own choosing. So we're going to take 982 bagels divided by 13 bagels in one box, and our quotient is going to be boxes. So this problem starts with, well, let me pick a number that I can easily multiply by 100 or by 13 that doesn't go over 982. So let's say I started with 10 boxes. I'd have 10 boxes times 13 bagels per box gives me 130 bagels that I've used up. So if I do 10 boxes, I've packaged up 130 bagels. I'm going to draw a little line right here. And I have 852 bagels left. 10 was probably too small of a number. I might try 20, 30. I'm going to go with 50 because 5 is pretty good with multiplication for me. This algorithm actually can be nice for people who have weak multiplication skills because you can pick the numbers that you know. So I'm going to go with 50 boxes times 13 bagels per box equals, let's see, 5 times 13 is 65, so 650 bagels. Oops. 650 bagels got used up for those 50 boxes, and I have 202 bagels left to package. So I can't do 50 boxes again. If I do 20 boxes, that'll be 260 bagels. So I'm back to 10 boxes times 13 bagels per box. It's going to be 130 bagels. Keeping track up here at the top, 10 boxes, 13 bagels per box, 130 bagels got used up. Subtract, and I'm left with... 72 bagels. All right, well, let's, uh, we got to use less than 10 boxes. It looks like five was promising with 65, so I'm going to use five boxes. Five boxes times 13 bagels per box uses up 65 bagels. I can't fill another box. I don't have 13 bagels, so seven bagels is going to be my remainder. So my answer is going to be the sum of all of the boxes. So I have 50 plus 10 plus 10 is 70. This is 75 boxes. And I had some left over down here, so I'll have 75 boxes with seven bagels left. Seventy-five remainder seven. 
Note the units on the remainder. The units on the remainder match whatever the units on our total was because we've been subtracting off bagels and we're left with seven bagels total. So this is a nice algorithm, like I said, because if I had done the standard um, long division algorithm, I would have said 13 goes into 98 and then I would have had to figure out how many times and it might have taken some trial and error to come up with seven. Whereas here I could just pick numbers that I was comfortable with and every number that I chose advanced me towards my total so there were no wasted guesses. Let's do another problem without all of the, uh, all of the labels in here, so without context. Ah, before I do that, I just want to make note that some people with this algorithm like to stack all of the numbers on top, and some people like to draw this vertical line down the side and then keep track over here and add up to get 75 boxes. Either method is fine. Let's do a second problem without context, without labels, and just use the algorithm. Let's take 3,522 divided by 6. So I'm looking to see how many times can I subtract off 6, groups of 6. And I think, okay, well, um, what, times, what number can I multiply by 6 and not go over 3,522? I like my fives, so I know 5 times 6 is 30. Let's make this 500. 500 times 6 is 30 with my two zeros. I'll subtract this off. Okay, so I subtracted 6 500 times, so let's do this again. Let's do maybe um, 50 times 6. 50 times 6, 5 times 6 will give me 30 with another zero. 222. How many times can I subtract 6 from 222? Well, let's see. Uh, let's go with 30 because 3 times 8 is 18, so I haven't gone over. So 18 with a 0. 42. Oh, that's one that I know. 6 times 7 is 42. And I have nothing left over in this case, no remainder. So what's my answer? My answer is 587. I could have stacked my work like this. I could have written the 500, the 50, the 30, and the 7, and then added here. The beauty of this is you might have chosen different numbers, and that's just fine. As long as you do your multiplication and subtraction correctly, then you'll get to the correct answer, even if it was less efficient than mine, or maybe you were more efficient than I was and got it in fewer steps.